Thank you. And so, yes, you guys are all in different bands doing all this, all, all sorts of projects. And I actually uh, found out uh, while I was doing my, my research for the interview that you also play guitar for Earth Crisis. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's that's really like the main thing that I do. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Earth Crisis is the main band. I've been doing that since uh, its inception, really, since 1991. Carl kind of had a brief iteration of it in 1989 that really wasn't the same band. But yeah, starting in 1991 through today, I've, I'm uh, in Earth Crisis. Yep. Um, right. Uh, so how did you guys get together? Um, well, for Earth Crisis. Oh, for, for Sect. Um, yeah. For, so... Uh, my friend Jimmy and I, who lives in North, uh, North Carolina, where I moved, I, uh, I moved all around for my wife was in grad school. And, um, at some point, um, I landed in North Carolina and, uh, had a friend Jimmy here who actually had filled in for earth crisis a couple of times. Stack basically kind of formed out of earth crisis people <laughs> that, that had filled in for us, like Andy Hurley had filled in um, on a tour or two with Earth Crisis, and Jimmy had filled in on guitar. And so I moved to North Carolina, and Jimmy and I just got the idea, like, hey, we should start something. And, um, you know, so we contacted Andy and, see if, you know, asked him if he wanted to. Andy had the idea, oh, I have a friend, Chris Callahan, who I toured with, and I'd love to do a project with him. And so it all just kind of fell together like that. You know, it was like, hey, I'd like to work with you. And then, oh, I'd like to work with this guy. And, we were lucky enough to have everybody say yes. Oh, that's great. I, I, I was just listening to um, um, the new album, Plagues Upon Plagues. It's really good. It's, 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 a, it's, it's more of a hardcore album than a, than a metal album, in my opinion. Yeah. Is this from, yeah. from, from um, all of your backgrounds, I guess? Um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, we definitely are trying to do something a little... I mean, the, the first couple sect albums were very like grind um, you know, blast beady albums. And I think that was a response to us doing something very different than what we're kind of known for. Um, we didn't want something to sound like Earth Crisis or Jimmy didn't want something to sound like Undying or, you know, we, we wanted something very different, um, even though, of course, we're going to bring elements for those bands into it. But um, but this record just didn't really feel just given the world and, and the state of the world, we wanted to have something very somber and kind of melancholy. Um, and so the fast the chaotic energy didn't seem to be suitable for that. So we kind of took it in a different direction, this record. Um, the, the, the visuals, um, you carry the monochrome visual all across your records. Mm -hmm. So how, is this, does this come from a you know the Ryan Core tradition like bands with like bands like uh, Insect Warfare for example they also have this kind of very high contrast black and white. Yes, I th I would say for sure. Um, you know it's funny because like I, I always tell you know Jimmy and the guys like this is very foreign to me. Like growing up, you know like the sect aesthetic, the sect sound, everything about it, which is partly why I love it so much because it's it's a totally different animal for me than anything I've really worked on for 30 years um but I yeah I we haven't really talked about that but my understanding being somewhat of an outsider to those types of bands and not really growing up too much in that genre I had like a pinky toe in that genre that's sort of always been my understanding with it too as far as like the visual that it definitely comes from a yeah, punk, you know, like crust punk, like grindcore aesthetic. And, and uh, when I was reading your uh, your press release, uh, the, the term uh, uh, straight edge came up. And then just yesterday, I, I did a podcast with the Briar from uh, Though, and uh, the this topic came up, the straight edge. And uh, I mean, I know what it means, and I get it. Sure. A hundred percent, and I'm on board with it myself. Even though I, I, I yeah, th this is actually the, the the main the main question I wanted to ask you. Like, mm -hmm. like, like, is there something wrong if like I have a glass of wine like as a straight edge? Because I consider myself pretty much straight edge. It spoke from what I understand. But if mm -hmm. I have a glass of wine, being Italian, I, I love a glass of wine. 
with a meal? Is it like breaking the philosophy somewhere? Um, yeah, technically it is. But I mean, you know, I think as we get older in life, um, you know, our our attitudes on that, I can't speak for everyone. I can really only speak for myself, but of course, you know, the attitudes course. on that become less rigid. I mean, I wouldn't do that. I mean, I think part of part of the straight edge ideology is it's it's a group of individuals that I think come from backgrounds where and that, you know, again, you're generalizing, but I think it's safe to say you come from backgrounds where addiction and, you know, alcoholism and things like that were rampant and also potentially dangerous for you as the individual. So at some point you, you, you kind of take a, it, it's a collective, right? And, you, and we all kind of take an oath to like, you know, abstain from drugs and alcohol and in a very rigid way, you know, in a very like never way. Um, for somebody, I think who outside of it, who didn't really grow up in a world where maybe that was as threatening to them or a family situation where that was threatening to them, I can understand them looking at it and going like, wow, very strict, very rigid, very like dogmatic even. I totally get those those views. But I, you know, for me personally and for a lot of people that I know, it was sort of the way to guarantee we wouldn't maybe go down the roads of family members or friends or other people. So at a young age, we, we did take a kind of a strict oath. You know, that's what straight edge is. It's like we're taking a lifetime, we're making a lifetime commitment to abstain from drugs and alcohol. But again, somebody like you, do I judge you? A hundred percent. No, I, I definitely do not, you know, judge no, it's okay. people. That, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I definitely do not judge people or, or consider myself better than in any way, shape, or form. Now, can I say that throughout my 30 plus years of being straight edge that I didn't go through weird phases and have weird ideologies? No, I certainly did get dogmatic and strange about it at times. Um, but, I, you know, at my age right now and where I've been at, for a long time, I certainly don't judge anybody that engage, engages in like moderate alcohol use or for, the, for that matter, marijuana use. I mean, that's a personal choice, I feel like. And as long as you're doing it, safely and responsibly i don't have any judgment on you for that it's just for me it, it was growing up in a family where you know my father was an addict and my father was a drug dealer you know and, and growing up just having that foundation of negativity um straight edge when i found it really spoke to me as a answer to that like a never answer so yeah um you know technically yeah straight edge is not you couldn't have a glass of wine with dinner and be straight edge technically. Um, but you know, I know a lot of people that call themselves that and do it anyway, and that's their business. <laughs> I understand. I was not aware yeah. that, that, uh, this reaction came from, uh, um, like you just explained from, from situations where, um, uh, th there were cases of, uh, drug abuse or alcohol abuse uh, and how do you expect, and now that you explain yeah. to it, it makes perfect sense. I, I would have the same reaction to yeah. break that cycle. Yeah, and it's not, you know, I'm generalizing. I, you know, it's not always. I mean, for everybody, mm -hmm. the reason they come to Straight Edge is very unique. It's very different. The reasons that people stay, uh, you know, under the umbrella is unique. You know, it's not always like that. I, I can just say for a lot of people that I know, they were involved, you know, their life experiences were that of, that if they did not find straight edge, they probably would have went down a very dark and dangerous path in their lives. Um, but there are certainly people that I know that did, that it just spoke to them and they just said, yeah, you know, I, I enjoy the scene. I enjoy the community and, um, you know, and, you know, it, it's not necessarily life-saving for me, but it makes sense to me. So they claim straight edge, you know, um, I can say, yeah, for me personally, and for a lot of people that I know, it was, it was necessary. Um, I think I, I think if I didn't, yeah, I think if I didn't um, find that at a young age, I, life could have turned out very differently for me in a in a very negative way. Uh, you you hear a lot of uh, stories like that. I mean, like when people try to break cycles, that make, that, that caused a lot of damage. So mm -hmm. with, without even knowing that they are a bit of uh, straight edge. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. And you know, Carl. 
uh, you know, this is kind of flip flop and back to Earth crisis. But actually, you know, it, it, they both say it, and I'm actually really proud of of both of the front men of my band when they say that. But the, on stage, they both have made similar comments to, um, you know, that they'll put songs out to people in the audience that are straight edge, but they also put songs out to people that stand by their friends and help them through addiction. You know, so it's not it's not a it's not a we're better than it's not a we of look course, down of upon. Not. Yeah, of course, you know, course. which which I, I can understand what people think that, you know, because a lot of it is, you know, lyrically, it's propping yourself up. It's being proud of being straight edge. So it comes off in a elitist fashion, I think, sometimes. Um, but, you know, I think some of that can be chalked up to being young and writing lyrics from a point of view you know from a young point of view but i think now that we're older um you know i do really appreciate when both of those guys in fact and in earth crisis carl and chris when they say on stage you know this this is the song goes out to our straight edge friends but it also goes out to anybody that stands by and helps your friends struggle who are struggling with addiction in my opinion it takes a lot of courage because you know the culture that we live in the moment promotes the yeah. opposite <laughs> promotes self-destruction, promotes yeah. self-destruction, destruction of the environment, uh, destruction of the family unit, destruction of everything, deconstruction. So if, if, if someone says to me, oh, I'm a straight edge, uh, immediately my reaction is, I ha I know this person has a lot of courage. Thank you. Yeah, that, you know, I, I agree. And I also, I also think, you know, we do, we live in a society that promotes a very individualistic approach to life where me, me, me. And I think when you do, um, maybe accept a straight edge ideology or, you know, and the other big aspect of our band is we're all vegan. I think, you know, being vegan as well, you know, it does open your, open your eyes to, um, you know, the, not just the individual, like how do my actions affect others? How do my actions affect other humans? How do my actions affect the environment? How do my actions affect animals? You know, yes. and that's one of the things that I really, cherish about being uh exposed to these ideas at a young age because i think it did help me change from you know my tendencies which i i'm constantly fighting of individualism you know to always remembering no 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 my actions affect others my actions affect in in the and th in a good way and a bad way you know i the, the good things i do can make a positive change in the world and obviously the negative things i do can make a negative impact on the world it's not just about me no, it's a very responsible uh, view on life and how we interact with each other, in my opinion. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, and, I like to think so, too. And I never really like, even though I like the music, I never really like this punk attitude, that, like, we don't care. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I like the music, yeah. but I don't like the attitude of not caring, because not caring, in my opinion, is a bit like saying, I, I don't have the, what it takes to take on. The, yeah real real challenges but not to care is easy because you don't have to do anything right it's it it borders on like nihilism you know or, yes, uh, whatever yeah. yeah we don't care about anything and and you know and i certainly have moments of my life where i feel like that you know where what does it matter these things that i do and and you know i don't know we can you know that's a big big conversation well, of course of course and, yeah it gets of into course. capitalism and all these things but at the end of the day uh you know i do think it does matter, um, even if you're just impacting those around you in your small circle. Um, that's important, you know. Are you going to change the world? Are you going to change governments? Are you going to change? Maybe, maybe not. You know, maybe over thousands of years, hundreds of years. But in a, on a daily basis, you can impact positively your community. You can impact your family, and you know that's worth, I think, doing if you can if you can make a positive impact in that way. Uh, absolutely, I completely agree. And, and uh, going back to the record uh, again, I, you know, also from what I read in the press release, uh, does plagues upon plagues have any re a reference to the pandemic? Oh yeah, majorly. Yeah, I mean, this okay. record was, yeah, this record was started during, you know, before the pandemic, um, and it took a completely different tone once the pa the pandemic hit. Um, yeah, you know, I can't speak. For Chris, I, you know, a hundred percent lyrically, but um, just on conversation that we had, I think it impacted him 
hard. Like it did a lot of people, you know, a lot of people, um, they went into, you know, really dark places. I mean, the world was in a dark place and, uh, I think some people dealt with it better than others. I think it impacted all of us in a way that we probably won't even realize for the next decade. You know, I know me, I thought I was over it. And now even just traveling like earth crisis just went to Europe and it was constantly at the forefront of my mind. Oh, am I going to get sick? You know, what happens if I get sick? What happens if I get sick on the way home, you know, on the, pl you know, it's just things I never thought about traveling before are now anxieties that I have that I didn't really realize I had. Um, so I think, yeah, Chris, it, you know, it affected him in a, in a very heavy way. Um, and that's where we started talking, you know, about changing the tone of this album and having it be more melancholy. You know, before we were kind of yelling at the world and this was sort of more of a, I, uh, Chris described it as a funeral, you know, it was more of a mourning, like, oh, we did it. We killed ourselves, you know? And so, um, yeah, that's kind of the vibe or, or where we changed, you know, we said we want to have the record feel kind of somber and dark and sad, more, not so much pissed, but sad, whereas the other records were pissed, you know. Uh, was the, was the, was the, um, I, would just, I would just say the expectation that uh, the, the pandemic was not going to be fitting, uh, uh, going to be over and the lockdown would happen like uh, not, not forever, yeah. but, but for, for yeah. like like i don't know 10 years or whatever i think it was more of a um you know it, it's like in in our music scene and in a lot of like alternative music scenes and heavy music scenes people have been talking about these things forever right it wasn't just so much the pandemic it was the culmination of all the negativity that was happening at the time mm -hmm. you know yeah. these world leaders and their heavy lean toward fascism and uh, divisiveness and then, you know, throw this global pandemic on the top of it. And it just felt very much like, a, oh, everything that we've been saying for the last 20, 30, 40 years that punk bands and hardcore bands and, um, you know, have been saying, metal bands have been saying, here it is, you know, it's at our front door now. And so in that way, okay, let's mourn what we used to have, you know, it's over. And I think it was right to feel that way at the time. It was understandable to feel that way at the time. I don't necessarily wholeheartedly agree with it. I I, I, I want to be an optimist, you know, and I want to always try to find the good and try to see through negativity and see past it and where it could end up in a positive way. But I think it was very, very hard to be optimistic at, at certain phases of this last four or five years. Yeah, I, I mean, like my my uh, great grandparents uh, died during our last pandemic that we had back in Italy, and no, no, I think, I'm sorry. I, no, it's okay. Uh, uh, and then twenty years later, we, we my grandparents saw the rise of fascism. <laughs> yeah, how, how, how bizarre. Yeah, and it's you know, and it's it. it I like, think it's like the a lot one. of people. Yeah, the real. Yeah, exactly. But I think a lot of people, you know, think it's hyperbole, you know, when people say things like that, like, oh, you know, we're dealing with fascism. But I think it's it's, you know, because I was one of those people. Ah, this isn't fascism, you know, when, you know, Bush or whoever it was was in charge at the time. And looking back on, you know, everybody would be like, oh, please give me Bush back. You know, <laughs> but like at the time it was fascism, fascism. And I always was like, eh. This isn't fascism, but the, the, you know the next phase really, I think, tread dangerously close on it, and especially here in America, I, I can't speak too much for the rest of the world. I know that everybody has their version of that guy. It seems like nowadays, <laughs> um, but you know we're on the cusp of it again here. So well, I guess <laughs> we'll see what our next four years are going to be like. Pretty. We have to stay positive uh, because uh, it can, it cannot happen again. Exactly, I agree. It yeah, I agree. Like uh, that would be like um, worse than the pandemic. Yeah. And uh, yeah, oh yeah, very much. I, I know I agree, but fingers crossed. <laughs> yes, of course, of course. 
I mean, it, it feels like, uh, at least in the uh, music community, we all um, together in, in this sort of, uh, I don't want to say we all think alike, but, uh, you know, the, the, the love runs through. And uh, and you can see that, uh, you know, when I do interviews or... So it's great. I mean, there is positive uh, uh, outlook out there, wouldn't you say? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I, I agree. And I, and I do see it. And I'm surrounded by it most of the time. You know, it does be... You know, every once in a while, it hits extra hard, though, when somebody that you feel like was in this circle of understanding and caring and that we were all on the same page, and then you realize that they're, you know, slightly slightly off or have been consumed by, you know, some sort of rhetoric or something, and you're like, oof, that stings, you know, because you you were supposed to have understood, you know, you were supposed to have, un we, we were all on the same page, and now you seem to have making up hard left turn you know so it's it's really hard to to determine sometimes you know like i don't know it, it's it hurts extra bad i think when somebody from inside this world um you see leaning in a strange direction but most of the people i would agree you know all on the same page slight differences of opinion i think are necessary um we don't want to be in lockstep with each other because that stops growth that stops conversation um but at the same time there does need to be a uniform understanding of like this is bad right we all agree this is bad yeah um right uh, again one more time going back to the album uh sorry if we sure. take this uh, slight um uh, you know um uh you know different on different topics and no no not at all uh, there is a, a track on on the latest album called uh, Zerzan Wet. What what mm -hmm. is this track about? What is Zerzan? Oof, that. <laughs> so I believe there's an individual, and I again, like I'm going to butcher this because I I remember asking Chris the same exact question when he wrote it, <laughs> but I believe it has something to do with an individual. Uh, I I forget his first name, maybe John John Zerzan. Um, that also may have been a joke somebody said, <laughs> but uh, truthfully, I'm not very familiar um, okay, with no, the fine. yeah with the yeah with the concept or who the who the individual was. Um, uh, I remember us all being like, huh, vague reference, you know. But maybe vague to my circle. Maybe your Chris is not vague at all. <laughs> and uh, so, so since since you all of you uh, uh, have. Uh... You know, they're all you're all like veteran in the scene and in music. Do you do you still like? Um, I would just say, do you still have like um, your favorite bands or, or you know like bands that you always got back for inspirations, that that kind of thing? Sure. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, there's lots of talk of that. Like when we're writing, um, you know, like this record, a big, uh, which is kind of funny because Jimmy, um, Jimmy kind of steers the boat as far as the direction of music how the record's going to sound and things like that. And his point of reference was like, you know, what, what I think neurosis sounds like, because he never really, he never was a neurosis guy. I love neurosis, but he was never much of a neurosis guy. So he would be like, well, I want I want this record to be what I think neurosis sounds like. <laughs> and so um, that was a point of reference a lot. Um, yeah. There were, I mean, there, there's a sec has a handful that, that we're kind of always going back to like his hero is gone is one that gets referenced a lot. Um, uh, this band called his hero is gone. It was like, uh, you know, the band tragedy, the comedy band. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, tra yeah, there's a band called tragedy, which is fairly popular, but his hero is gone with some members of, of tragedy. Their, their early band, like in the, I think mid to late nineties, they were, um, great band if you ever want to check it out. Really good, but they're they they get referenced a lot. Um, but yeah, we certainly have you know our go tos. A lot of them are very old references, but we also do try to stay you know semi up to date on what's happening. I mean, Earth Crisis is out playing a lot, so we'll play with a lot of like the newer, younger bands. So I get exposed to them that way, and I, I sect as well. I mean, we've toured with uh, some of the newer you know like younger guys like Magnitude and. Uh, you know, a handful of, like newer bands. So, 
Okay, you know, when I first got into Mesel, the one thing which uh, came up uh, almost immediately, like, you know, when you buy records, because I'm 50, so I remember the tape trading time and... Uh, yeah, I'm 52, yeah. <laughs> you know, going to the record shop and, and look at the records leaves for like an hour, because you only have uh, so much money, maybe for one record, and then you have to wait, the, you know, the next month by another one. Yeah. So the one thing which came up all the time was, was this... Uh, um, uh, what's it? How would you call it? Like this uh, rivalry between the, uh, you know, metalhead and the uh, hardcore punks. Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, this this never happened. At least where I was from, where I'm from, this is. I think is more like an American thing. Yeah. So what is it? And I, I'm well, not saying that, I'm, I'm not saying for people that, that would be listening to this. It's more for me to understand it. Yeah. Because I, I never really got it. Yeah, I think, um, I don't know. It's, hard, it's so hard. I mean, my my opinion on this is going to be very polarizing. I think people are going to get mad. But I mean, I do think that there is a sense of, you know, to the punk and hardcore community, there's a sense of uh, pretentiousness to, to an extent. Um, there's, you know, just because I've always, I, I come from a metal background. I got into hardcore because I like what we were talking about earlier. I like the ethics. I like the politics. I like how extreme it was in the, in those ways. I like you know, the, the wild things that were being said. And the, the time that I came up in punk and hardcore, it was very, uh, just thought, you know, there was a lot of thought going around. There was a lot of discussion going around and you'd go to a show and you would learn, you know, there would be, uh, you know, Krishna consciousness, uh, you know, stuff. And there would be vegan and animal rights stuff. And there would be, feminist literature and there were you know uh you know pro you know lgbtq stuff and you know like all these things that were for a 15 year old or a 14 year old were just brand new ideas you know nobody was talking about this stuff and so i loved hardcore from that sense but c coming in as the metalhead i experienced that i experienced that um oh you're not you know it is the better than you attitude. Like, uh, this guy doesn't really get it. You know, he's got long hair and not a shaved head. So he doesn't really get it. And earth crisis dealt with that because we were a very metal sounding band, especially at the time, like going back, it's not really that metal at all. But at the time it was very metal, lots of chugga, you know, chugs and staccato riffs, you know, which was not what was going on in hardcore. So we dealt with that, you know? Um, and we were, you know, not to pat myself on the back, but we were changing the landscape of hardcore a little bit with us going out touring. And there were definitely some pushback. Like people were very angry that metal was invading their hardcore. <laughs> and now it seems laughable because a lot of times you can't really tell the difference between what's metal and what's hardcore. <laughs> you know, these days it's very, the lines are very, very blurred. Um, it's not as, it's not as black and white as it used to be. So yeah, I don't really yeah. know. I mean, I think, yeah, I think that, I think that punk and my attitude was, you know, metal guys that back then were just there to party and have a good time. Punk and hardcore guys were more intellectual. They wanted to read, they wanted to educate themselves. So they kind of drew a line in the sand too. And it seemed very much like, oh, those guys, they're just dummies. They're, you know, those guys are just dummies. But then, you know, you see the rise of, of, you know, very political hardcore bands at the time. I mean, like bands like Nuclear Assault and uh, Carcass, and these guys were all dealing with similar topics that hardcore bands were dealing with. So I never really felt like that stigma was too true. Yes, I mean, uh, you're, you're right. I completely agree with you. In in the metal scene, yes, you have uh, a lot of bands and a lot of genres which uh, the, lyric, the lyrical content is completely rubbish. Doesn't make any sense. Totally. Yeah, uh, but but then again, uh, I mean, I don't have as much experience as I had with metal with, with the hardcore and punk, but also punk is a bit like that. Oh, like, very much. Well, I went through a yeah. I mean, punk has gone through a phase, and and you know, and hardcore has gone went through a phase where it was very like egocentric, you know, like um, you know, which was great at a time, but it always goes through phases where it takes over. So there was a big push in hardcore in like, you know, the late nineties, you know, to, 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 to early two thousands, where it was just this, like, 
I don't know how to describe it without being overly rude because I do love some of those bands at the same time, but it was just very like, you know, self-centered, you know, we're, you know, just kind of like, they were, they were saying things without really saying anything. It was, it was clearly designed in a way for the room to be unified under a slogan or a, a chant that they could call out that aligned itself with anyone, you know, a straight edge guy could think it was about them. But also a white power guy might be able to think it's about them. You know, it was I, I like was very... actually, I was actually going to bring that up because me yeah. growing, growing up in Italy, uh, I remember at the time the hardcore bands that I was exposed to that I liked uh, and also that were not skinheads were like uh, Agnostic Front, the DRI, Tromags, bands that yeah. I liked and bands that, that I can, uh, 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 how do you say, like uh, uh, relate to. Yeah. But, but, but then uh, as I was getting old, because I was only 16, uh, 17. So, so as I was getting older, obviously there was no internet. It's not like you could do research. You could see like skinheads. And that was a major turn off for me. Like, like, mm-hmm. like, like, like I really, really don't like that. So, so yeah. that's why, that's why I never really, after, you know, that time, I never really explored more hardcore bands because uh, this skinheads assholes were always there. Yeah. For sure. And Earth Crisis gets that, you know, I mean, I I don't know that we've ever made it more clear that we're in opposition to white supremacy and, you know, and things like, I mean, it's like, obviously, to me, it was always obviously we're not, but there are certain areas of the world um, where those guys are also straight edge guys. And so somehow those weird lines get crossed and blurred. And yeah, we, we get people like that, too. You know, so it's like, it's not, you know, Agnostic Front's fault. I mean, Agnostic Front has always been very clear that they're not yes, yes, yes. white supremacists or support that in every way. Yeah, so so much so, so much so that they fight those guys. And, you know, when those guys show up to their scenes when they were younger, they beat those guys out of their scene. And similar with Earth Crisis, we also did too. Um, but yeah, it's... I, I don't know if it's the band's fault. So I don't know. No, I, I, I I just I, I'm, yeah. I'm not put, I'm not pointing fingers by by. Yeah, by I know, I'm, I'm just, just sharing, sharing my experience. Yeah, my experience. Because yeah. also, I, I was uh, again teenager. I didn't speak English. I I could only understand things by the way people look and and how they behave. 100%. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, and I think it's there. Well, you know, that's the problem. It's like you know, there's something to be said for you know these slogans, right? That they that you can just kind of apply to anybody you know sometimes you need to draw a really hard line in the sand and say exactly what you mean you know because i like i said you know if there's something about unity and there's something about unifying a room by what i want to see that i I don't want i don't want just straight edge people to like sex you know i want to see the room be unified with all sorts of people and everybody getting along having a good time but at the same time you know you, you, you gotta you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna break some eggs when you're making a cake right and so of course, you of gotta course. say you gotta say something you know you gotta say something it has to be very clear what you're saying you know i think it i think that there was a period of time where it was almost hardcore was almost going for like, like that commercial uh attitude where it was like let's not offend anybody let's just say every you know and i'm like well hardcore he needs to offend people a little bit that's what makes it hardcore music you know it needs to be thought-provoking it needs to push the boundaries a little bit maybe even a little insulting you know but i mean it it it, like we did it i mean earth crisis did it and gotten on some trouble for a lot of the things we said and i look back on it and i'm like that was right now that was wrong we certainly made some missteps but the one thing people could never say about us is they didn't know where we stood you know um and i'm really proud of that but so anyway, you know, getting back to the, the the question, I think, you know, the hardcore elitism pretentiousness is pretty invalid because hardcore has certainly gone down those roads of being, uh, you know, very uh, accommodating to everyone in the room as well, which I think was maybe the argument early on. Like, well, metal's stupid. Metal doesn't really say anything. These people are just there to have a good time. And I'm like, well, I think fast forward 10 years and you can say the exact same thing about hardcore. Okay. And uh, on a more cheerful note, uh, you have, uh, in my opinion, uh, one of the best uh, songs in the both metal and hardcore, Anthem Firestorm. Do you still play oh, it? Oh, thanks. 
Oh, every yeah, we could. We it would be probably chased out of town if we didn't play it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I I spend uh, I I spend hours watching as many videos I can possibly find on YouTube to just find that one song with in different with different crowds. Oh, cool. You know, yeah, just thank see, you. Just to, just to see how people react. Yeah, we often we often joke uh, in the Earth Crisis camp. We often joke that people tolerate, you know, forty minutes of the set so they can get to our last song, Firestorm. <laughs> we like if we played it if we played it first, everybody would just go home. <laughs> how old were you when you wrote it? Oh man, probably fifteen, fourteen, or fifteen years old. Man, that song is yeah. It's such a, it's such a perfect song, like. Oh, like, thank you. You know, like you know, you hear songs, uh, or you hear, or you see pieces of art, and you, you think, oh, you know, what if, you know, you change this and you change that. But with with Firestone, you, you, know, you can't. It's just perfect the way it is. Oh, thanks, man. And yeah, it's. I think it's just one of those things. You know, people always say, you know, the e the 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 best ones come together easy, and I do remember that one coming together quite easily. Um, just you know, sitting. We we used to practice in the basement of my mother's house, and uh, we were down there. And I just, I think literally it was written in an afternoon. You know, it was wow. just one of those things wow. that just yeah, it just came together really easily. And it was obvious like before we even recorded it, we would play it live, and it would just get it would get that kind of reaction, even before anyone ever even heard it. You know, like there was no recording of it, nothing. And then we did a demo version. And when we would play locally, you know, the place would go crazy. And we've been lucky enough to have people still interested in it, you know, for 30 years. <laughs> so not many yeah. bands can say that. So we definitely consider ourselves pretty fortunate. It, is it the same where you get people on stage as well and the crowd surfing and... Oh, yeah. Like we just had... Uh, um, yeah, if you look at... Uh, actually, I just posted a photo on our Instagram page. We just did... A, Earth Crisis just did a week in Europe um, yeah. about... Yeah, about a week ago, we got out and I'm getting from it. And um, there's a photo that just doesn't look like anything. I mean, it's just a group of people just climbing on top of each other. I mean, there's no real focus <laughs> to the photo. It's just kind of chaos. And I, I posted it, and I, that was certainly during Firestorm. Yeah, man, I love. You can't even see I, a band member. There's not one. There's not one band member in the photo. <laughs> it's just I, I love groups those of days. people on top of each other. I, I can't yeah, do that now. If yeah. I do that now, I'll, I'll probably break my back. Uh, but oh, I me too. Oh my gosh. I, I remember when I was uh, like in my early 20s, I was crowd surfing and washing. Like, yeah. all was I, I loved it. I loved it. Yeah, it's good, man. It's a good, it's a good positive, you know, uh, aggressive outlet for sure. And I, I, that's what I always liked about um, Europe too. Like in America, you know, it gets a little... It's good now. I mean, but it went through a phase of like really violent, like just violent. violence for this. Yeah, just violence for the sake of it. You know, it was like it, it was just actively trying to hurt people. But I will say Europe's always had a more positive vibe with it. People are getting wild and people are, are you know, but nobody's intention is to hurt anybody else. You know, and I've always really appreciated that about when we tour Europe. Uh, I've never been to a uh, metal gig in the in the U.S. Uh, actually, I have. I saw Velvet Revolver, but that was like a like a very like polite sort of gig. Oh, cool! Where did you see them? It, it was in Las Vegas, and me and my wife went on a honeymoon around the world. We took a year out. Cool. And, yeah. And uh, and one of the stops was Las Vegas, and we saw Alice in Chain with the Velvet Revolver. Oh it, man, it was, I, dude! Yeah, I was would love to have excellent. seen that show. Yeah, it was excellent. But it was, you know, very polite. You know, you, you know, this is your seat that you sit down or stand up. Sure, and, sure. And yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> there was no crowd surfing or. Yeah, I think Las Vegas tends to be a little bit like that. It, it's a, uh, you know, as far as much as it, it gets the reputation for a wild, you know, place. But yeah, when you go to concerts, they're all very regulated. Guys, so I've been to a couple there, and it's all very polite at the concerts there. Was it, now? Let me ask, Allison Chains. So this was. This was the new singer, right? Not yes, Lane yes, Staley, right. yeah. No, no, Which I love. Yes, I love. Right. I love. Right. Yeah. yeah, I love him too. I, I love like Black Gives Way to Blue is one of my probably top ten albums of the last you know fifteen years or so. I love that, but that's cool, man. But yeah, in Europe, in Europe, I don't, you know, obviously I've seen loads of videos, but in Europe, uh, it's not 
that like it's if someone trying to cause trouble like like a fight or being very aggressive it i don't want to say it's pushed aside but it's not like cool you know it's not um right yeah frowned upon as they say yeah frowned upon for sure yeah yeah the vibe is just i i would say that's not so true anymore like and i can't speak for you know i can't speak for the scene because i'm very i'm very removed from it like when earth crisis plays or sect plays you know we have a certain more mature audience like people are older you know a lot of the guys that come to see us are older so they're more well behaved (laughs) yeah yeah they're they're more well behaved so i don't know you know what the young younger crowd is dealing with but there was a period of time where for us it was like yeah it was unbelievably violent you know and it you know it was it, it really put a damper on playing because i mean it's like you don't you don't necessarily want to see that. You don't want your show to get shut down. You want to be able to come back. You don't want to be known as the band that brings out this bad element that people are going to get hurt. So parents don't let the kids come to your show, you know? It's just a negative all the way around. Uh, are you guys going to do another tour either with Sect or Earth Crisis so maybe we can grab a beer? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> we, uh, we, uh, we earth crisis and sect both will be playing a lot uh, yeah sect is going to start up andy had some you know obviously plans with his other band <laughs> that other little band that he does is what has been busy over the summer uh so um but uh come yeah come the end of august like sect is going to start picking up and doing some shows off this record and then earth crisis yeah we we usually pop our heads out of the sand a couple times a year so we have a show coming up next week in new york city with integrity and dead oh, guy wow. which will be really good and um and then we have after that i don't think we have anything going on until november where we're playing a show in chicago um okay. but you know we usually do we usually do a week or two a year earth crisis does i, I did say a uh, grab a beer as a figure of speech of of course oh that's fine no i understood what you meant and i it, even if even if you didn't mean as a figure of speech i still thought it was funny so it's okay <laughs> no, no, I, I, you know, after I said it, I said, oh, shit, why, why did I yeah, say yeah. it? Yeah. Um, well, because that's what people do, right? That's yeah, what people it, do for fun. Yeah. It, it, it's a figure of speech. It's a figure. Exactly. No, don't, don't, don't worry about that at all. Uh, 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 Scott, we, we spoke for a while. Thank you for your time. I, I could talk to you for like the next five years. And, and, and yeah, you. man. Yeah, no, it's been, it's been an awesome conversation. Thank you for, for talking to me. I'd love to, I'd love to do it again sometime. Of course, yes, that'd be great. All the best with the with the new record. All the best with all your projects and bands. And uh, yeah, man, thank you, thank you for your time, and uh, keep 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 it straight edge. Yeah, thank you, man. Yeah, and and best of luck. And yeah, hopefully, I can't wait to see the see the interview. Make sure you tag us in it, and I'll I'll promote it on our pages and everything. Of course, I will do. Take care, my friend. All right. All yeah, best. you take care too. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hey, folks. Thanks for watching this podcast. If you enjoyed this interview, please like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friend, your family, and your cat, and stay awesome. Don't forget to check out our store at www.headingmusicartwork.com. Ciao for now. Preview.